Somebody shout hallelujah. Can you lift up your two hands to heaven? As we Mazule bata gabaka shunte ni mama. Skele brande kabaka santa ni mama. Thank you mighty father. Blessed be the name of Christ. You are the mighty God. The great I am. Mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. If you are able to hear him, the Bible says he is the author and the finisher of our faith. If you are able to hear from the author of your life, then you are likely to discover more who you are. And so you want to lift up your voice tonight and say, Father, at your table tonight, let me discover my destiny. Can you go ahead and touch the Almighty God? Touch the Almighty God. That at this table tonight, you will discover your destiny in the name of Jesus. Lord, let me discover my destiny at your table tonight, oh God. If I can hear you, oh God, let me discover my destiny. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Mighty and everlasting Father, I want to say thank you for this invitation extended to us to come and dine at your table. Daddy, we say may your name forever be exalted in Jesus' name. Daddy, your word say you are with us. One thing that will happen to those you are with is that they are able to hear you. Daddy, tonight, oh God, may we hear you with clarity in the name of Jesus. Is there anyone under the influence of my voice that have, that have not been hearing you for years, for months, for weeks, for days? After tonight's meal, Lord, open our spiritual ears in the name of Jesus. Gracious and everlasting Father, if we can hear you, because you are the author and the finisher of our faith, 
it means we can discover who we are in you and what you have made us of. Therefore, tonight, oh God, let there be discovery in the name of Jesus. As we go into your world, speak expressly to us and let your name alone be praised. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I thought God would say a better amen. Put those hands together for the Almighty God and wave your neighbor and say you are welcome in Jesus' name. Leslie be seated in his presence. The topic tonight is be with him at the table. What do I call it? When he says, I am with you, the Bible made us to know that he will be with you when you are with him. He will be what? He will be with you when you are with him. So the topic tonight is be with him at the table. Our test is taken from the book of John chapter 21. It's a long verse, but we'll read it for the purpose of emphasis. Just, just listening to the gist. Listen to the story of what transpired. From there we can be able to deduce one or two things. John 21 verse 1 to 17. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They said unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Verse 7. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus lost said unto Peter, It is the law. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the law, he got his, his features coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciple came in a little, sorry, and the other disciple came in a little ship, for they were not far from the land, but as it were 200 cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon as, as soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coal there, and fish laid thereon and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring out the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, and hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Verse 12, Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples dare ask him, Who art thou? knowing that it was the law. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus, this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Love thou me more than this? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lamb. He said to him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, love thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, 
feed my sheep. He said unto him again, verse 17. The third time, Simon, son of Jonas, loveth thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, loveth thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Beloved, thank God that Peter was at the table. Thank God that he was at the table with, with him to dine together with him. Praise the Lord. When the Lord wants to be with us, he will invite us to come. If the Lord desires to be with us, he threw an invitation at us. The Bible says in our passage that we read that Jesus showed up to the disciples being the third time after he had risen and he extended an invitation to them. He came to them, why? Because he wanted to be with them at that point in time. Am I correct? But the question is, would they want to be with him? He wants to be with them. He came looking for them. Find them. And then now said to them, come and dine. Beloved, when an invite is given to somebody for an occasion, the fellow have right to honor the invitation or reject the invitation. For example, he sent his invitation out to some people that need rest, but some he refused the invitation. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy landing. He said, I will give you rest. But it's not everybody that accepted the invitation. In other words, when you are given an invitation, you have rights of acceptance and refusal. For instance, in Matthew 19, verse 20 to 21, Jesus came across a young rich man. The man was very rich. And Jesus extended an invitation to him and said to him, young man, follow me. Praise the Lord. Jesus said unto him, If thou will be perfect, go and sell that that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Jesus wanted to be with this rich young man, and he told him what to do. <laughs> but to Jesus' greatest surprise, in verse 22, the Bible says, But when the young man had that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had what? Great possession. He didn't honor the invitation. Jesus said to me, Come, go and sell all that you have. I want to give you treasure in heaven and follow me. But the Bible says, The young man walked away. He didn't honor the invitation. On that faithful day, <laughs> when Jesus said to the disciples, come and dine with me, you will all agree with me. At times when we visit our loved ones, particularly when you are from polygamous house, you will see your mother telling you, when you visit so-so mother or your stepmother or the children of your stepmother, they will tell you, don't eat there. They have a witness in the house. They tell you, don't do what? Don't eat there. When they ask you to come and eat, what do you say? 
I am fine. I'm okay. I'm beautiful. Meanwhile, you are hungry. Let somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> but your mother doesn't want them to kill you. And so many of us are used to, at times, when you visit people, like myself, you'll be hungry. And they'll ask you to come and eat. you say what? I'm okay. And you are suffering in silence. <laughs> Let somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Some will pretend. When they say, come and eat, you say, I'm okay. Say, let them ask me the second time. <laughs> let somebody shout hallelujah. But as God will help you, <laughs> as soon as you say, you are okay, there was no second opportunity. <laughs> By that time, you are now angry. You say, ah, these people, they don't want to give me the food in the first instant. After all, they're supposed to press me. <laughs> Let somebody shout hallelujah. What am I trying to say? Jesus came to them. And all he could tell them. After he has spoken to them, okay, you can now launch. You know, when God is with you, he ends your suffering. There's somebody here tonight, your suffering will be ended. Peter and his colleagues have struggled. Overnight, they caught nothing. The first thing he did when he came to be with them was that, have you caught anything? They said, no. He said, see the fishes by the right hand side. And they cast the net. And they could not draw. Because in it was what? The Bible says, great fishes. In that name that is above every other name, you will hear God tonight. Showing and pointing to you where you need to get your breakthrough. Putting an end to toiling in your life. But that's not where we are going. Where we are going is that he said to them, come and die. Peter, Unlike the rich man, the rich young man that didn't honor the invitation of Jesus, even though he was offered treasure in heaven, out of ignorance, he didn't know the one that was saying, Follow me, go and sell all that you have and follow me. He didn't know him. The Bible says he went away how sorrowful. Why? Because he felt, because to me, he wasn't rich. Can his riches be compared to the one that says, silver is mine, gold is mine? Can his riches be compared to the one that says, the earth is of the law and the fullness thereof? Can his riches be compared to the one that says, a cattle on a thousand hill belongs to me? Can his riches be compared to the one that says, he is rich in mercy? But God did not know. He refused the invitation. But glory be to God. When he said to Peter, come and die, Peter honored the invitation to be with him and to die with him. And a lot of things happened. Love it. There were mammoth crowd here this morning. And Jesus said to everybody, to the pastor, come and die. At the table tonight, 5 p.m. What happened to them? Hello? It's only those that are here that have honored the invitation. Those that didn't come, what have they said? They said, We don't want to dine with you. Do you know what it means for the author and the finisher of your faith? For the Almighty God. For the one that can make a life and can kill to say to you, come and die with me. And you say, no. I don't want to die with you. What an ignorance. I tell us, and I'm repeating it, sir, ma, never joke with the lost table. Anywhere you are, 
You have opportunity to dine at this table. Nothing in your life can be more important than you coming to honor the invitation. Come and dine. Peter honored that invitation to dine with him. What happened? Number one, do you know, sir, if you are a real Bible scholar, you are going to discover that that day, that day that Jesus said to them, come and dine, and Peter had no invitation, that was the very day that the law ended failure in the life of Peter permanently. Check your Bible. You know, the first time Jesus met Peter, he was a failure. Luke chapter 5. The Lord spoke into his life, into his business. He had a breakthrough. And then and there, the Lord spoke to him, henceforth you'll be fishers of men. Thank God, he heeded and followed him. But after the denier, when Jesus said, you are going to deny me three times before cock, he said, I will not. But it happened. When it happened and Jesus had been crucified, because Peter has this leadership grace and quality in him, had been issue. He decided to go back to fishing. After all, the master that we are following, they have crucified him. We don't even know what will become of him. I bet me, I they go fish. Oh. Instantly he said, I they go a fish. All of them. The two sons of Zebedee, Nathaniel, uh, mention them, John. All of them, they follow him to go and fish. And he went. It was still failure. It was still what? But that night, that night that Jesus said to him, come and die, and he came. From that day, check your Bible. It was after that day, Jesus departed from there. He commanded them to, to, to assemble in Jerusalem until they be endued with power. And Peter heeded and was endued with power. After this encounter, Peter never failed again. Can I pray for only one person? In the name that is above every other name. After tonight's meal, anything called failure in your life shall be ended in the name of Jesus. Either you say amen or not. I don't know what you are into. I don't know what you do in, as business. I don't know what your career or your profession is. In that name that is above every other name, you shall fail no more. He honored that invitation and he never failed any longer. Be seated in his person. Number two, what happened? Peter going a fishing after Jesus had said to him in Luke chapter 5 that he will be fishers of men was a distraction. Was what? A distraction. A distraction from God's original purpose and plan for his life. A distraction from God's assignment for his life. He was not focused. But you know what? After that day that the law was with them and he said to them, come and die. And Peter honored that invitation. From that day, Peter became focused. Every distraction was cut off. Check your Bible. It was after then, the day of Pentecost came, he preached a single sermon. 3,000 was added. By the following day, he saw a layman that gave beautiful, ensured that he performed a miracle in his life, preached a sermon, 5,000 was saved. From that day onward, I mean, another sermon, the Bible said they could not even count the number or so saved. Another day, the shadow had to start healing. Sir, man, he became focused. Can I pray for somebody here tonight? The reason why the Lord wants to be with us is that he wants to eliminate distraction. Many of us are getting too distracted. 
cry to God and say, Father, only one person is praying. Say, Father, cut off every distraction from me tonight. As I dine with you at your table, remove every distraction. Help me to be focused. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Gazanta limama, Gazanta limama. Zebrande kaka baba baba kashente limama. Thank you, Mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. May you remain focused all the days of your life. Anything that want to distract you, so that your original purpose, God's original purpose for your life, is not fulfilled. Let God call them off this night in the name of Jesus. Be seated in His presence. Number three. The Lord restored him back to his leadership position. Do you know the kind of leadership position God has given to Peter? The leadership position God has given to Peter was not to lead fishermen like the two sons of ZBD, like John, like Nathaniel. That is not just the kind of leadership that God has bestowed upon Peter. No, sir. The leadership God has bestowed upon Peter go beyond fishermen. It was a global leadership. It was a universal leadership. It was what? God wanted to make Peter a universal leader. Hello? You want to ask me, Pastor, what are you talking about? How did you know? Ha. Read your Bible as a Bible student. Read Matthew 16, verse 18. Is it not this same Peter that Jesus said to him in Matthew 16, 18? He said, And I say also unto thee that thou art what? Peter. And upon this rock I will build what? My church. And the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. In other words, Peter was to become the first leader of the church. Can you compare that magnitude of leadership to just being leader of fishermen? That day, that position was fully restored and Peter became the leader of the church. Can I pray for somebody, sir? The potential God has deposited in you at this table tonight, it shall be activated. Whatever you have lost in leadership, grace, and quality, as you die at this table tonight, you shall be fully restored. If you are saying amen, say it loud and clear. Be seated in his place. Number four, he was made ready to fulfill his destiny that night. Peter was made ready to fulfill his ministry. He was made what? Ready. Because the Lord threw some question at him. Three times. Peter, loved thou me? He said, thou knowest. Hmm. Say, feed my lamb. Peter, Thou loveth thou me. Thou knowest. Feed my sheep. Beloved, at the third time he was almost getting angry. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has he entered into the heart of man. The things that the law had in store for them that were that love him. That night at that table, at honoring of that invitation, he was made ready to fulfill his destiny. And you know what? After that night. Peter never stopped loving God. He never stopped loving Jesus. No any other thing could occupy the heart of Peter in love other than Christ. Stand on your feet. 
Many a time we sing this song. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Yes, I love you, Lord. You are Lord. Brethren, oh, you know it. There are many a time when you sing that song. You are only pronouncing words in your mouth. It's actually not from your heart. Beloved, when the Lord is with us, he wants us to establish that love relationship. That was what existed between him and Adam before the fall of man. The love. Can you lift up your two hands to heaven and say, Father, help me to love you all the days of my life. Help me to love you. 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 Salima Kasanta Limama. Cabrede Basuta Limama. Carababo Zabalema Kashente Lele. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Brethren, I told us we should not meet this night. I don't know who God is talking to this night. But you know what? When Peter honored that invitation to dine with him, his commissioning was made explicitly clear. In Luke chapter 5, he only said to him, I will make you fishers of men. But by the time he got to that John 21, after dining, he said, feed my lamb. Feed my sheep. His commissioning was made explicitly clear. I decree, sir. Whatever God desires for you, as you die here tonight, your eyes will be open. Your ears will be open. You will hear with clarity tonight. You will see clearly tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let tonight be not be ordinary me in your life. In the name of Jesus. So lift up your two hands to heaven. As we go into this meal tonight. And say father. Say father. Don't just open my ears. Open my eyes. Let me discover my destiny. Let me discover my life. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Talk to the Almighty God. Mazole bata blade kashente li mama. Zale gaga gaga gaga. Branda bakuta bashente lele. Mazuta bale. Is somebody talking to the Lord at all? say thank you. Lord, I don't know what you want to do with our life tonight. But go ahead and do it. Thank you, mighty Father. For we pray in Jesus' name. Please be seated in his presence. In the text that our mommy read to us in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 28 we are want to examine ourselves so that we should not eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily. The Bible says, whoever that drinketh and eateth unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not designing the lost body. Say, for this reason, many are weak and sickly among you. Are you sitting here tonight? 
You are still keeping malice, bitterness, unforgiveness against somebody. Don't risk dining with him. Because it can be very terrible. But if you want him to have mercy, you can surrender to him. And so if there's anybody here, you know you are not worthy of dining at his table. You are the only one to lift up your right hand and I pray a prayer of mercy with you so that you can go ahead and die. Is there anybody like that? Okay. I have one person. Can you please stand and let me just pray with you? Another person? Another person? Another person? Shall we pray? Precious Father, I want to thank you for the life of your son. Lord, because you are rich in mercy, please be merciful unto him. Let your mercy qualify him to dine at your table with you tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, at your return, let him reign with you. Whatever it is, O God Father, Lord, forever erase in the name of Jesus. For we pray in Jesus' name. Let's be seated. God bless you, sir. Brethren, the only thing I didn't tell you was that Jesus said to them, come and die. Because he specifically wanted to do something about the life of Peter. The Lord went to be with them. No doubt be with them. Do them to another level of inviting them to die with him. And that day, the Lord did something. <laughs> the Lord did what? Did something about the life of Peter. As you eat and drink tonight, I beg you, sir, I beg you, man. Let your prayer be, Lord, do something about my life. When? Now. It was at that dining. Thank God. Peter honored the invitation. Thank God. You also have honored the invitation tonight. Come and die. You're already here. So your cry tonight will be, Lord, do something also about only he know what to do to you. That day he performed a spiritual surgical operation upon the destiny of Peter. And Peter never remained the same till he died. And that was why I told us, don't meet this evening. But many will say, what will Pastor Avos say? Is it not Passover? What does he want to preach? You are not God. You can't be God. And nobody know the day of visitation. But my prayer is that before you leave here tonight, God will tamper with your life. Tamper with your destiny. In the name of Jesus. For I have received of the law, that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me on a hill far away.
here to be served with bread or wine? Can you wave your hand at us? Okay. himself into the sea. He came out and was clothed with his glory forever. <laughs> Brother, you will not miss this night. I want you to open up your heart to God. He Peter honored the invitation commander and he did something about his life solve his problem gave him hope clothed him with glory ended failure in his life make him a universal leader he can do much more for any of us tonight so when you drink ask him you could solve any problem in your life right now just open up, Lord, do something. Do something about this sickness. Do something about fruitfulness. Do something about blessing my life. You know what you want him to do? After the same manner also, he took the cup when he has up saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. In the name of God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit.
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we are praying. Can we all please stand as we stretch out our hands to the altar? I beg you, in the name of God Almighty, give God a resounding amen. And as you say that, amen, something will happen in your life. In that name that is above every other name. And you have honored the invitation to come and die tonight. Let God do something about your life in the name of Jesus. Let God do something concerning your health in the name of Jesus. Let the Lord do something concerning your physical strength in the name of Jesus. Concerning your spiritual life in the name of Jesus. Concerning your emotional strength in the name of Jesus. Concerning your fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Concerning your greatness in the name of Jesus. Concerning your destiny in the name of Jesus. Concerning your glory in the name of Jesus. Concerning your spouse in the name of Jesus. Concerning your children in the name of Jesus. Concerning your business in the name of Jesus. Concerning your finances in the name of Jesus. Let the Lord do something now in the name of Jesus. The law ended failure in the life of Peter. Zimalito Bayeka Prakazanda. In every life endeavor, you will never know failure in the name of Jesus. We are others fail, you will succeed in the name of Jesus. Let God cover your nakedness with his glory in the name of Jesus. Every area of your life that you have been naked, exposed, and put to shame, let the Lord cover your glory in the name of Jesus. Whatever the Lord needs to restore in your life, let God restore you now. Restore you now. Restore your leadership. Restore the grace. Restore the anointing. Restore the gifts. Restore the power. In the name of Jesus. Zamalabos kete brada, nebo zapute gazia kali gaga, shamba la lega suta braeka suta lia. After this night, I decree concerning you, your destiny will not remain the same. The author and the finisher of your faith will do something awesome concerning your destiny that about Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Put those hands together for the Almighty God.